Hey guys, welcome back to another video on biological molecule exam questions. So pause the video here, try these questions out, and continue on to see how I answer them. Okay. Question seven basically has a table and then it wants us to draw a graph. Okay. So when you get graph questions, you need to be accurate, but there's other things you need to think about. You need to occupy basically occupy as much space as you can with the uh, table given, not sorry, table, but the graph given really, okay? And then make sure you've labelled your axes properly, okay? So for this question over here, you might be thinking like, oh, like which one do I plot? Well, they told you here, but let's say they didn't tell you it was mean percentage of absorbance. Just because it's three trials, doesn't mean it's one of them. It's always gonna be the mean that you plot. That's why um, there's not many sections for that on the table. So, essentially, on the y-axis, mean percentage of absorbance. If you didn't write mean here, you wouldn't get the mark. So that's how important it is. Um, then, as for x-axis, we've got glucose concentration. And always, you must include units when there are units present. Okay. Then you just uh, try and plot them. Because I was doing on the iPad, it's a bit difficult. But uh, after doing that, Draw a line the best fit, about three points should um, lie on the line, like mine did, and then you'll be fine with this, okay? So it's an easy graph question. Then we have this question over here. Explain how the student would use the calibration curve to estimate the glucose concentration of the fruit juices. Hmm. Let's just read what they said up here though, just in case. The students were provided with three different fruit juices labelled A, B and C. The Benedict's test was carried out on each fruit juice and samples were prepared for the colorometer. Okay, when it says explain, it means it's like a regurgitation of content. You know this stuff, okay? Then this is calibration curve, right? Uh, to estimate f glucose concentration, okay. So basically we're trying to find unknown glucose concentrations. This is why they've given you this table uh, to draw over here, because that is the calibration graph thing. <laughs> calibration curve, really. So, as for this answer, you would say, you would find the absorbance, yeah, from the graph. Um, and you find that concentration that corresponds to that absorbance. So let's say you put in a sample A into the um, colorometer, right, and then you've got an absorbance about 40%. What you do then, as I've written um, here, is that you follow the absorbance value across to where it uh, hits the line of best fit, and then you go down, sorry, this is a bit, it's not really accurate, but you get the point, right? You go down, and then this value over here, whatever that is, like 3.5, and minimum per decimeter cubed, is the answer, okay? That would be the concentration of glucose. So this is like, Something you really need to memorise and actually understand. Okay, so that's why I've just gone through it on the graph with you. Because you know sometimes, right, when it comes to PAGs and practicals and stuff, like we can memorise certain stuff, but um, if the question gets worded differently, then you're stuck because you only know how to apply a certain answer to a certain question. So whenever you do choose to memorise certain stuff, like uh, verbatim, make sure you actually can justify it and you understand where it's coming from. And the way I would do that with practicals is 100%. YouTube, search out the practical, watch someone do it. Okay, watch a teacher in the lab do it. It makes so much more sense. Okay. Now, oh, this one's, a, this one's crazy. This one's actually crazy, I can't lie. So, it's a full marker on describe how you would carry out a controlled experiment to test this hypothesis without using a colorometer. Okay, what's the hypothesis? It is that... The higher the concentration of glucose in the fruit juice, the sweeter it will be. But here's the caveat. It's saying you can't use a colorometer. Right. <laughs> and we've got three samples of fruit juices. A, B and C. So what do we do? Well, there's many things you can do. And that's why it's interesting. So I've put this, uh, the marks here so you can actually see for yourself what's going on. So... When you get something like this, try and think very logically. 
if we're trying to see, you know, if we have fruit juices and we want to see how sweet it is, just taste them. I know for a fact I didn't say that in my answer when I first did this question. Um, we live and we learn. <laughs> now we know, right? You can taste them. Um, also, one thing I want to tell you guys, there is this word called biosensor. It's literally, like, it occupies a very tiny portion of the page in any textbook when it comes to this topic. But the amount of times it's actually come up as an exam question, like a one marker, oh, what other apparatus or what other equipment can you use for X, Y, and Z? Biosensor. I've never in my life uh, gotten a mark for those sort of questions because I keep forgetting that bio biosensors exist. So I'm telling you to memorise this and, <laughs> and remember this, okay? Uh, so yeah, you can um, place a sample of each fruit juice in a biosensor and then you need to take the reading, okay? Because I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, what are we doing then? Um, or, right, if this says or, it means that you, for that one marking point, you can either get it for saying this or this, but you don't get two for both of them, right? This is uh, one or the other. But the most easiest one, to be fair, is just saying, you, you know, Benedict's solution. Or like Benedict's test strip and observe the colours. Um, yeah. And then because, you know, we're trying to test this hypothesis, we need to rank them by sweetness and then see the concentrations for them. So remember to rank them. Um, and then you want to compare the ranks, as I just said, between concentration and sweetness. And because it's a controlled experiment, you get a mark for talking about a control variable. So that's like a very easy mark you can get. Next one says, suggest one reason why the results for this experiment might not support the student's hypothesis. Easy, it's subjective. You're telling me you're tasting some fruit juices and then you're saying, yeah, this is how like sweet it is. How you determine what the sweetness of like juice A like it's not going to be the same to how I determine it or somebody else does it. So subjective. If it's not using like a quantitative measure, um, like a colorometer and stuff, then it's subjective. But if you're actually using a machine like apparatus stuff, you know all that, then it would be objective. But that's why I wouldn't really fully support it because it's um like down to opinions really. And yeah, that's for today's video. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.